So thank you again for being with us this morning. Let's pray. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for the day. God, you've been so good to us. And we cannot praise you enough uh, for what you have done. We cannot uh, begin to imagine all the things that you have done in the past and the things that you're doing even right now and what you're going to do in the future. Bless us together this morning as we study once again in the book of Isaiah. Thank you for your grace, mercy, and love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The title of our lesson today is God Saves. The subtitle is God's Sovereign Plan Includes Providing Salvation for Those Who Believe in Him. The scripture reading is Isaiah chapter 25 beginning with verse number one. Let's read those verses before that we begin. O Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name. For thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. For thou hast made of a city and heap of a defense city a ruin, a palace of strangers to be no city, it shall never be built. Therefore shall the strong people glorify thee, the city of the terrible nations shall fear, fear thee. For thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat, when the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. Thou shalt bring down the noise of strangers, as the heat in a dry place, even the heat with the shadow of a cloud, the branch of the terrible ones shall be brought low. And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the lees well refined. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people, and the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth. For the Lord hath spoken it, and it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. For in this mountain shall the hand of the Lord rest, and Moab shall be trodden down under him, even as straw is trodden down for the dung hill. I want to also read to you a passage of Scripture that I think will help us to better understand that God saves and that God has a plan for you and I. In James chapter 4, verse number 13 through verse number 15, we read these words. James said, Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year, and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your light? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. For that you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. Now, I think that you know and understand that we all have plans of some type. Let me give you just a couple of examples that came to my mind. Young people, and I remember I did this when I was uh, a young person. <laughs> uh, I'm 73 now. And uh, young people, they make plans when they're graduating from high school as to what college that they are going to attend, and of course the subjects that they have to take in order to pursue the career that they want to pursue. Then young married couples, uh, they make plans uh, as to what size house that they want to build or maybe they want to buy. Also they make plans as to what size their family uh, they want it to be. Now. We all understand that our plan making sometimes does not always come to fruition. That's even though that we've considered all the pros and the cons. But yet in God's 
plan making, he knows the outcome. And his plan for all humanity is to have a relation with him through his son, Jesus Christ. Um, now, we've stated this before, and I want to state it again, because God is sovereign. Uh, we understand that. He's sovereign, and being sovereign, he has the right to do with his creation what he desires to do. But you see, God chose, even though that he was sovereign, he chose or he has given man the ability to choose whether or not he will follow God's plan or his own plan. Now, as we continue our study in the book of Isaiah, God had a sovereign plan for Israel. And that plan was for Israel to be a blessing to all nations. You go back to Genesis chapter number 12, where God called Abraham. He was the beginning of the nation of Israel. And you remember what God said to Abraham in chapter number 12. And of course, as we move forward, we know that uh, Israel, they could follow God's plan or follow their own plan. And over and over again, though, we find that Israel rebelled against God. And of course, God would have to judge them. Now, the book of Isaiah is prophecy concerning Israel. It is prophecy concerning the fact that Israel would be judged for their disobedience. Now, when we come to chapter number 25, we find that even though that Israel had rebelled, God is bringing deliverance to the people of Israel. And even though that Isaiah is prophesying concerning Israel, as we look a little bit closer, a little bit deeper, we will find that God, God Israel, uh, Isaiah, I'm sorry, that Isaiah is also prophesying concerning all humanity. Now, there's three things that I want to bring to your attention as we go through uh, our study this morning. First of all, that God's salvation will lead to praise, praise to Him. We see that in verse number 1 through verse number 5. And we're going to focus just on the first part of verse number one. Second of all, that God's peace will be enjoyed by all who trust him. We have peace in our heart. And one day, and we'll talk about this again, that there will be peace for all of God's people. Then, of course, thirdly, and this is really the most important part of our lesson, is that God's salvation comes through faith in him or in his son. Now, let's go back. Look at verse number one. Uh, again, God's salvation leads to praise of him. Listen to what uh, Isaiah said in verse number one. He said, O Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name. There's that word praise. He said, I will praise thy name. Why? Because you have done wonderful things. Thou, thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. You see, the reason why that Isaiah could praise God was because that God had delivered his people. Isaiah was one of the people of God. And of course, Isaiah, no doubt, had been delivered as well. But God had judged Israel for her rebellion. And as a result of that, after a period of time and after their repentance, God brought his people out of captivity. You remember that we mentioned 70 years last week in our study. 70 years they had been in captivity. Now God is bringing them out. Israel had rebelled, but God had restored them. He had saved them. Now, we make the application to us. The reason why that we can, or the reason why that we should praise God is because that He has restored us. He has saved us. He has redeemed us. How has He done that? He has done that through the death of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. So, when we think about salvation from the standpoint of Israel, uh, Isaiah was praising God. When we think about salvation from the standpoint of you and I, we should be praising God 
as well. Praise Him every day for what He has done for us in the past, for what He is doing for us even right now. At this very moment, we should be praising God. Here's the second thing that will bring to your attention. That God's peace will be enjoyed by all who trust Him. Look at verse number 6 and verse number 7. Isaiah said, And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the lees, well defined. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. Now let me interject something here at this point. When you look at verse number 7, it says he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. Most scholars believe that Isaiah is referring to to death. And of course, when we think about that God will remove death, we can have peace in our hearts. We can have peace in our mind. There is going to come a time when he will do that. Now, going back to verse number six, he uses the term all people in that passage. The word all people does not refer, now let me say this, and I will say it very clearly, and I want you to understand the, the term all people does not refer to all the world. There is no such thing as universal salvation. That is, that all people will eventually be saved. I know that there are teachings out there that tell us that, but that's not going to happen. You study the New Testament, you study the Scriptures very carefully, and you will find that not everyone will except Christ. Not everyone will be saved. But go back again. God's plan is for all to be saved. But there again, God in his sovereignty gives man the ability to choose whether or not he's going to accept Christ as personal Savior. All people in the text is a reference to those who trust God. At this point, he's speaking of Israel. But in the future, he is speaking of those who will trust Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. There will be a time of peace for the people of God. And that's going to happen when God defeats all of those who oppose him, even Satan himself. And God will do that in his time and in his way. But there is going to be peace and it will be enjoyed by all who trust Him. I'm looking forward to that day. How about you? Are you looking forward to the day that we will have a peace, a peace that passes all understanding? Well, when I think about that peace, I have peace now in my heart because I have trusted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And I know that He has forgiven me of my sin. He's cleansed me of my unrighteousness. As I said, uh, to the church where I was this past Lord's Day, I said to them, I'm not perfect, but I will say to you, I'm not perfect, but I'm forgiven. And that gives me peace in my heart. So there is coming a time uh, that all people, uh, that, that is those that trust uh, God, trust Jesus Christ as personal Savior, that there will be a time of peace for them, and it will come when God defeats all those who oppose Him. And you can trust me on that. And God will do this in His way and in His time. And that leads to the third thing that I will bring to your, your attention. That God's salvation comes through faith in Him, that is, His Son. Now, read the rest of the, the Scripture again, and you'll, I think, see what I'm talking about. Uh, that, uh, you know, that faith... Uh, comes by trusting in Him, or that salvation comes by trusting Him, by trusting in His Son, Jesus Christ. You see, God's plan uh, for Israel was that they would be a blessing to the world. That was His sovereign plan. They could choose whether or not to follow God's plan. God's plan for all mankind is to be saved. And you see, He determined that before time began. 
He knew that man, when he created man, he that man would sin and that he would need a Savior. Israel had sinned, and yet God forgave them and brought deliverance to them or brought salvation. And God does the very same for you and I, even though that uh, we are sinners, even though we have sinned against Him, He does the very same for you and I. Uh, he has, again, He determined uh, that we could have salvation even, even before time began, but we have the choice of whether or not we're going to accept His Son, Jesus Christ, as our personal Savior. So, here again, I want to remind us that God's plan of salvation for man is in a person. It is in Jesus Christ. Uh, we talk about that uh, God's salvation comes through faith in Him. Well, who's Jesus Christ? He was God, God incarnate in the flesh. Was He not? Yes, He was. And so, when you go from the book of Genesis all the way through the book of Revelation, there is one, one central theme. And that one central theme is this, that Jesus Christ would be the Savior of the world. Now, go back quickly uh, to our title. It says that God saves. And Isaiah is relating in the text how that God had saved and delivered Israel. God saves. And his sovereign plan includes salvation for those who believe in him. And so here's the question that I will bring to your attention. God saved Israel, and he will save all who have placed their trust in him. But the question is this, have you done that? Have you placed your faith, your trust in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Remember what we have said in the past, that in the book of Romans, Paul tells us that if thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thy heart that God uh, hath raised him from the dead, uh, then uh, that is Jesus Christ, that you can be saved. He said in verse number 13, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, the same shall be saved. Uh, in John chapter 14, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. You see, man can be saved. He's the only means of our salvation. But the choice is yours. The choice is mine. I can say to you that I have made that choice many years ago. At the age of 13, I received Christ as my personal Savior. So, has God saved you? If He has it, He will, if you will allow Him to do so. Now, for those of you that are listening, that are saved, let me encourage you, go back and study the Scriptures. Not just what we've talked about this morning, but study the Scriptures. Take time to read the Word of God. And study the Scriptures for yourself. And I know that you'll be encouraged. I know you'll be strengthened by that. And certainly God would have you to do that. So again, uh, God saves. He will save anyone and everyone that will call upon his name. Let's pray together. Father, thank you again for loving us. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for what he did for us on the cross of Calvary. And thank you, Father, for the prophet Isaiah as he's given us a glimpse of what God can do and will do, what he did for Israel, that he saved Israel. Uh, yes, Israel disobeyed, Israel rebelled, they were judged, but yet God loved them. He loves us, and he allowed his son to go to the cross and die for our sins. So thank you again for your love, grace, and mercy. And I pray for that one that is listening that may not know Jesus as personal Savior. I pray that they will. I pray that they will receive Christ into their heart and their lives at this very moment. Thank you again. Love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I want to remind you again, stay tuned at 9 o'clock for live stream from Leatherwood Baptist Church. The praise team, Brother Mike, will bring a great message, and you will want to uh, uh, you want to be a part of that. If you can't attend church, you'll want to be a part of that. You will be blessed. Thank you again. We'll see you next week. God bless you.